Hey everybody, we're in a really cool place today at the Orlando Science Center towards downtown Orlando for the 2014 Makers Fair. It's not something that you would typically think of when you think of Orlando and theme parks, but there's a lot of cool things to do in Orlando that are not theme park related. This is one of them. There's tons of makers, tinkerers, and inventors from all around the area and around the country that come here to show off their wares. So let's take a look. So with these five folks from Ta that use Bluetooth technology and they're so excited, it's contagious, where they've been able to develop Bluetooth on, on cards that are able to plug in and you can control multiple devices with your phone. Um, I'd be lying if I didn't say some of this is beyond what I can do myself or think of do myself. But they've gone from beyond being able to control lights and colors of lights to being able to control your computer at home through your smartphone your PS3 using your smartphone instead of using the accelerometer driven uh, controllers and as well as controlling other things like PowerPoint slides and things like that and the coolest thing that I think that you're, they've been able to implement this in is virtual dice or dice as you can see in front of that gentleman it's a little bit bigger than the smaller die but able to use the die in an environment where you can con you but now it's three. <laughs> you can throw it. Two. So, cool. Let's say if I want to build smarter board games on iPad, I can do this. Think of all the years we wasted on Friday nights having to gather in each other's homes playing Dungeons and Dragons when we could have just been sitting in our own beds. <laughs> hey, we're here with Joe from IndieBox, and they have a really cool concept. How many times have you been buying games online now because we live in such a virtual realm where you buy a game online and you don't get the actual tangible joy of feeling a book or a poster or the little gimmick type things that are inside of it? These guys have taken the concept like a loot crate and they've built Indie Box where you're getting a game a month for about $16.99 plus shipping and you get all of these cool things. So you get all of the game boxes. They're all driven through Steam by the way and you get all kinds of cool things inside of your box. The one thing that you get in order to drive your game are like these little cards, and the cards have a little USB drive inside of them, and you have your Steam key included as well. So it's like getting the games online like you do now, but getting the joy of getting something in your hands as well. And it's super cheap, 20 bucks a month. It's really cool stuff. I'm going to put the link to IndieBox below in the comments or the description, so check them out. It's really cool stuff. Look at these guys in their 3D printers. They got a half printed Yoda over there. And a big crowd. In case you were wondering how it works, the material that gets melted is up on top on those spools, and you can see there's multiple colors, and it comes down, the printhead melts it and forms it into the design that you have programmed into the printer. That's amazing. So to give you a little bit of idea on the time that it takes to print, that little skull takes about an hour, and the fire hydrant takes about seven hours. Which when you think about it, it's not that entirely unreasonable because if you were making it using a mold, it would take considerably longer time than it takes to do print. We interrupt this technology to bring you the cutest little dog being held by a robot. That's ridiculous! Here we go. We're going to bring the theme park to the Science Center. Look at this. Uh-oh. 
It is kind of just like riding the rides at Disney World, where they don't make it all the way around. What would a Maker's Fair be without robots? So you should know the type of competition that they do, they have to pick up those types of yellow blocks that you see on the floor, put those yellow blocks into those holders, the most blocks that get into the holders and keep those boxes steady or, or even or flat, they win that particular heat. The other heat is they have to come over and they'd have to hit the board and turn it so that the flag goes up to the top, which is super impressive. And they have a third heat as well where they need to both uh, learn to balance and dangle on a bridge um, and work collaboratively. It's really awesome stuff. These guys have like a whole video production area over here with the green screen. And they got a bunch of simulation stuff. Very cool. So we've got some additional 3D printing happening over here. Printers are a little bit different. In case you were interested, you can buy a whole lockpick set. Look at this big creeper. It's part of the Tampa hacker space. They're making quad coppers, copters rather, and uh, more 3D printing. So here's some more 3D printing. This guy's making a clothes hanger. Look at this guy, it looks like he is maybe making a Pikachu. It is a Pikachu. Yeah, it, it makes, <laughs> the little polys make good um, demonstration prints. So awesome. Look at the size of this thing. So 3D printing is the big thing here. I mean, and there's 3D printers everywhere. And most of these folks all build it themselves, and a couple of folks talked to us that said that they were building them for retail, where they're gonna sell them themselves. The stuff that they're building, literally, when we talked to that guy about um, the Pikachus that he's building, it's about 10 cents worth of materials, and it takes about an hour or so to make, or less. So, it's really incredible. We talked about building um, roof material that is um, strictly 3D printed or ceiling material. We talked about the types of like business cards that you could look at and hold up to the light and it's a complete picture. There's so much amazing stuff. It really is difficult to comprehend all of the technology that has really advanced over the last few years. I think that 3D thing that you lift up for a picture is called look of fame. Not sure, but I think it is. This is really cool. You could 3D print yourself. That's amazing. By the way, this is the best sign here. And Han Solo, Han Solo, Han Solo, and Portal. So this particular area is something I would have like died over as a kid because I love to take things apart. And they have tons of cool things to take apart. Computers, old VCRs, DVD players, radios, all kinds of cool stuff. Computers, holy moly. They even have stuff at Maker Faire for little kids, like little cardboard city, where you can make cardboard homes and castles and all kinds of good stuff. Sponsored by the Box Shoals. They've designed fins that separate just like real fish fins. They're a little bit more efficient in the water. That's pretty cool. Holy cow, this place is packed. It's robots. You 
can virtually paraglide over here. So they don't make your That's so cool. Yeah. And they've got free video games up here too. Tons of stuff to play. And the Star Wars Droid Builder Club is here as well. So we got R2-D2. And it's another R2. And here's a clear R2. Look at those gears. That's awesome. So, 
Laura, I can confirm we have aisle lights off and hall lights off. Are you ready? Tessa Coyle live. And three, two, one. notice that the light bulb was lighting up or were you too distracted by lightning bolts? We'll, we'll try it again and see if you can divert your attention over to that light bulb. Here we go in three, two, one. So did the light bulb light up? Awesome, the Tesla's machine works. And now we're going to come up on stage. We've got a lot yeah, of wires here. Blew the and out. you can exit out this side. Thank you very much. That's Enjoy your awesome. career. By the way, fun fact while we're sitting here in the dark, we're going to get out. If you go to the Tampa Bay Times Forum, and I know they just changed the name, but I don't remember the name, where the Tampa Bay Lightning play, they have two of the largest indoor Tesla coils that you can find, I believe, in the world. And they play them during the introduction of the Tampa Bay Lightning and when they score goals. And that's awesome. And that's why we live in Florida. The cool thing is like Tesla coils in our arenas. We're going to check out some robot wars now. <laughs> dinosaurs here. Ferocious. By the way, this store does everything in soap. That's Han Sopo. But we're buying that Death Star for our Death Star collection. Yeah, no, it's great. It's really awesome. So Mary just bought me a Death Star made out of soap from a guy that I think maybe Will Wheaton working a night job. <laughs> It's very cool that they have a green screen here sponsored by ABC affiliate locally that um, you can predict, you can do the weather forecast. So, and the green screen is supposed to read the prompts. Well, we're having a little technical problem here where we're not reading too well. But you see what's on the screen compared to what's actually there. We're inside the hurricane simulator. Oh! <laughs> Here we go! Watch my hair! <laughs> Check out my beard! <laughs> it's not moving! <laughs> <laughs> Outside, they have home brewing type demonstrations <laughs> and solar stuff too. There's so much to see. Hey, we're gonna cook some stuff. Use a solar panel, mirror. Look at that bacon. Cooking bacon. Fair. Who's ready to see something crazy? Woohoo! Okay, this is totally gonna be super crazy and awesome. Uh, my name is Melinda. I'm gonna use some liquid nitrogen and soaking water to make a little bubble explosion for you guys. I have my liquid nitrogen. Here. Liquid nitrogen is really, really 
Cool. So nobody has expensive cameras right here, right? All right. In goes the liquid nitrogen. This stuff is really cold, guys. Really, really cold. I wish I could. Can I jump in it? You can shoot. It's a human snow cone machine. See, you get in the wheel like a hamster, run, and it's crushing the ice. And then you can put your flavorings in over there. That's really awesome. So Paint the Trail is here, and we've seen their work before outside the German restaurant. And we've seen their work on the trail that goes up in Longwood towards Lake Mary. This is some of the good stuff. If you walk one way, you see, you see the Joker there. And on that side, Batman. We've got Daryl. And they wanted me to paint a picture. Or a zombie. Crown. It is awesome, awesome work. We've actually seen this rock picture before outside of the German restaurant. Here comes a robot. And these guys are painting one of the boards to paint the trail. So this is pretty neat. They've created a device that's using a Raspberry Pi, a USB tuner stick, and open software, open source software to create a, uh, a SDR, which is a software design radio that receives flight data. If the device can actually see a flight within range, it's transmitting the flight information through this speaker box. So you know exactly what actually is coming by. One miles out, at an altitude of 19.50 feet to the southwest, I see flight N652 RV8 miles out. And by the way, this was created locally at Valencia College in Orlando, so props to them. Very cool stuff. Well, that was an incredibly fun day. There is a lot of stuff to do at the Orlando Science Center to begin with, but you add to it the Maker Fair being um, in Orlando this weekend, and it was a ton of things to do. So much stuff to do that I don't think that you can do it in one day. I know that we certainly left a bunch of stuff out, um, but their crowds were kind of sizable as well. It was still manageable to walk around, um, but there was a lot of people. So uh, thank you Orlando Science Center for putting this on, and thank you Maker Fair for coming to Orlando. And on that note, we say goodbye and wrap this part of uh, today's vlog and see if we can get any more adventures in. We'll see if there's a part two.